Welcome to the Fantasy Football Sackos Podcast with your hosts, Jason Shellcross and Alex Krobe. Let's go! Oh, Fantasy Football Sackos, episode 29, here to talk about some week one rankings debate action ahead of tonight's game and this weekend's game. Alex, football's back. Today's the day. Are you ready? Well, so this is dropping on a Friday, right? So just a terrific game last night, even though we're recording this <laughs> Thursday <laughs> Thursday during the day. Um, so terrific game last night. Uh, really excited about winning my gambling bets that I put in. Um, for those of you who are wondering, I, I teased Kansas City's over down to 47 and also teased their nine and a half to three and a half. So both have to hit and you'll know if I won or lost money when you listen to this. Uh, wow. So over 47, Kansas City minus three and a half are my teaser pick. Um, and you're so taking yeah, the uh, over on that then? Yeah. Yeah. Over, over 47. And the three and a half, you took Kansas City to cover? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, hey, teasers are a thing because you never win them. They just kind of just kind of tickle you a little bit. Um, <laughs> and you always lose one of the two, at least. So, um, so yeah, football is back. Uh, big news today is Virginia uh, McCaskey of the Bears, who's 97, is traveling to Detroit. She ain't afraid of no coronavirus. No. She's uh she's showing up to Detroit to watch my guy Mitch Trubisky just rip apart the Detroit Lions. Hey, Can't there wait. you go. We're gonna talk about him a little bit later. Um, but for now, let's uh, let's get into this. We're gonna be going back and forth on our rankings today. Uh, specifically, we're talking about guys that Alex and I differ on, and we're gonna you know put each other on the spot to explain why. So let's start from the top with some QBs that we differ on. Um. I have Tom Brady ranked at sixth. You have him ranked all the way down at QB 10. So barely even a fringe fringe QB one this week, barely startable in your eyes uh, playing at New Orleans. Alex, why are you down on Tom this week? Uh, Mike Evans is questionable. Um, he's going to be a game time decision with that hamstring, uh, apparently that he's got popped up. Um, so just that fact, I'm, um, uh, you know, knocking him down a couple pegs. Uh, we, we don't know what that offense is going to look like. We don't know practices. He's a quarterback on a new team, uh, new system. So just for that reason, just initially, uh, I have him down at 10, um, and also, I like other quarterbacks to have um, that have better matchups. Um, the Saints' defense in New Orleans on that turf um, is really tough, and I feel like the Tampa Bay Bucks are they don't have as much speed as they do size, especially if Mike like especially if Mike Evans isn't going to play. So you got Godwin, but then you got Gronk and OJ Howard. Um, I just for whatever reason, I, I have them. A little lower than okay. you. Yeah, so I think he's a firm start, and I, I wouldn't be surprised, honestly, if he finished even a little bit higher than QB6. Uh, I think he, I think that this game has track meet written all over it and uh, absolute gun show. So um, I think that they're going to be doing everything that they can to keep up with each other, That them being the Bucks and the Saints. Uh, New Orleans last year gave up the 13th most points to QBs. And so I, yeah, I understand, you know, they're the home team. Uh, I guess I'm curious to see what the fan situation is in New Orleans. I know that, you know, the Houdat Nation uh, gives generally quite the home field advantage. However, I'm not sure if uh, NOLA is doing limited fans or not. So that might be interesting to see. Yeah, are they able to pump sound in to be louder when they're, they're on defense that or something wide. like that? Like, yeah, but are, they're not allowed to like change the decibel. Level I'm not though, sure. Right? It's going to be interesting. I would think not. Even tonight's game, yep. uh, or well, actually yesterday's game. Last exactly. night's game, super interesting. Um, next, let's move on to Big Ben. This is good luck defending this. I have him at QB ten. For Big Ben, Alex has him ranked as QB two this week ahead of your reigning NFL MVP uh, Lamar Jackson, who was the only quarterback to put up more than three thirty point weeks last year with seven, and you have him ranked behind 
Big Ben. So please, why is Big Ben your quarterback two this week? The Giants defense stinks. Yeah, uh, that's the that's the biggest reason. Um, so it's a it's, it's a first Monday night game, right? I believe. Um, and Big Ben's back. I think he's going to show everybody why, you know, he's historically been like a top eight quarterback every year that he's stayed healthy fantasy wise. And the thing with Lamar, that being a division game, um, I do think that the Browns are going to try to keep them off the field. Also, Lamar kind of fell off at the end of last year a little bit. I don't know if teams figured them out, um, but you're going to kind of see what Tennessee did to them in the playoffs last year. You're going to see a very similar, um, you know, type thing where, or Tennessee didn't play them, did they? Yeah, no, they knocked them off in the first week um, where they just ran the ball, kept control of the ball, Nick Chubb, Kareem Hunt. They're going to keep them off the field. And I just for some reason, I just am slightly off on Lamar this week. I mean, I still haven't ranked at three. I think it's more of, of a big Ben um, is going to be really good. He what the the Giants gave up the third most points to quarterbacks yep. last year. Um, so I don't see why that wouldn't continue. If anything, I think that's the shootout um, on Monday night. Clearly, uh, the other game kind of stinks. But um, yeah, I just think Big Ben's going to come back. With I understand the uh, Big Ben having a, a great game. I'm just a little bit nervous to rank a quarterback that hasn't played uh, a 30 plus year old quarterback who hasn't played in a year plus with a surgically with a surgically no repaired elbow. But hey, you're, you know, bravery. I think that if he wasn't drafted in your league, I think he makes a great end of the bench stash to see if he blows up week one because he'll be on the waiver wire column on Monday, Tuesday, if he's not, um, yep. or if he does blow up. Uh, let's move on. Now, I do just want to slide this one in here. I just want to say that I did see the uh, the absolute disrespect for Ryan Tannehill. You're ranking all the way down at quarterback 28. And I just want to say I saw it. I noticed it. And uh, yeah, um, basically, you're going to eat that ranking. But hey, that's that's really all I have to say. Uh, you for have that. him at that's, 18. I have him at 28. Yeah, yeah um, 10 spots higher. The disrespect from you is unreal. I don't care at all. Nobody's starting. At nobody's Denver, playing Denver. him this week. No, nobody is. But still, the disrespect, I just want to let you know, I've seen it and I don't appreciate it. I will. He'll be much closer to 28 than he is 18. Okay. <laughs> You're going to tease that down too? Yeah. Can I please? <laughs> Uh, let's move to RBs, uh, running backs. I am bullish on Josh Jacobs this week. He is my running back five. When I did my initial rankings, I actually had him at fourth overall ahead of Zeke. Alex, you have him down at 10, uh, behind the likes of Raheem Mostert, which we will get to, but please, um, I think, I guess I'll go first. Why I think Josh is going to explode. Basically we saw he was averaging, uh, like uh, fringe RB one numbers last season playing with a broken shoulder blade and also not really playing a whole lot on third downs, at least in the first half of the season. Um, obviously, you know, we've been preaching how we think that role will change. Then you slot in an opponent in the Carolina Panthers who gave up the most points to running backs last season at more than 27 points per game to the position. I think he's in line to have a huge week. I wouldn't be surprised if he finished in the top three. Um, I do have him at five just in more recognition of the other guys that uh, I do believe in, but uh, man, if he explodes, whoo, watch out. Why do you have him down at 10? I just believe in other people more for whatever reason so like we we're going to talk about Mostert but I have him over him um Chris Carson I have over him who's I mean I just love that's the a fact tasty that, matchup for yeah Carson. it's a good yeah. matchup um Zeke is in front of him Dalvin Cook's in front of him while well, he's still healthy you got to ride him into the ground my assuming biggest thing plays is, what's that assuming he plays and doesn't sit out all of a sudden yeah well then Josh Jacobs would be bumped up into the, my top 10 or at number go. nine. Uh, Derek Henry, I think, goes off. Joe Mixon, I think, has a huge, huge game um, for whatever reason against L.A., the, the Chargers. Um, so just Jacobs just kind of fell back to 10. 
it's nothing personal. Uh, some of it's a West Coast team going to the East Coast and just traditionally those teams don't play well in that uh, 12 o'clock Central game slot. Um, so that's why I think they just come out a little sluggish and I think the Panthers just bury them. Yeah, we'll see. I think scores are up are going to be up overall this weekend just because the defenses haven't had any time to prepare for anything and a lot of defense is reactionary. So I wouldn't be surprised if there are some high high scoring games in general, but we'll see. It'll make for a fun talking point uh, next week. Uh you know what? I am. I'm going to skip over Clyde Edwards Hilaire because he played last night. So there's really no point talking about our rankings difference. Uh, I just would say that I had him ranked at 10th this week and Alex had him ranked down at 18th. So the difference between a fringe RB1 to a fringe RB2 or middle of the pack RB2. Um, I just thought he was uh, going to have a great role in that Andy Reid offense. This is more of a general comment, but I'm just not trusting any rookies week one. Um Okay. That until they prove it, that it goes for Clyde, it goes for anybody. I just, they have to be by default lower until they can show it. All right. Well, let's let's talk about Raheem the Dream Mostert. Uh, I have him ranked down at 18, and you have him as running back nine. Um, Arizona did give up the 12th most points to the running back position last year. Why are you so high as a top 10 running back on Raheem Mostert in week one? Uh, Who's Jimmy Garoppolo throwing to other than George Kittle? We have no idea if Debo is playing. Ayuk might be out as well. Ayuk is playing. Uh, I mean, he's got nobody else to throw to. We will maybe see the reemergence of Jarek McKinnon after back-to-back torn ACLs. Um, So that that might hurt his value a little bit. We don't know what they're going to do with Tevin Coleman, but... um, I, I think that you could see Mostert like they could run the ball like 50 times. I wouldn't be surprised um, if they did. And just try to keep the ball away, f- you know, keep their defense fresh. They have the, one of the best offensive lines in football. Um, Mostert, I believe, had 12 touchdowns his last nine games last year um, during the regular season. And I see no reason why that won't continue. Um, I just think that he has the upside here to uh, to for sure be an RB one this week. I guess um, much like you're penalizing rookies until they prove it, I'm penalizing Mostert until he proves it because it just wouldn't shock me if like all three running backs got 10 carries in this game, like in Wilson, uh, Mostert and um, um, McKinnon. So I don't know. I will see or Coleman to Coleman Tuesday. I mean, it's just going to be. It's to me, plugging him in is like an RB one. I get like an RB two or certainly at flex, but man, that's just, that's so bullish. Um, there you go. Number one. We shall see. Can't Uh, wait to get shit on for all this next week because I'm sure you'll bring it back. Yeah, I was going to say hello, Tevin Coleman in the red zone, Jarek McKinnon on third downs. Like you're just, you would be so upset. Yep. Shanahanigans. All right, uh, Cam Akers. I have him ranked all the way up, if you want to say it's up, at uh, running back 21. Alex has him down at running back 32. Um, Dallas gave up the 12th fewest points to running backs last year, so not a great matchup coming, but I think that this is probably more volume-based. They have him at third on the depth chart behind Malcolm Brown and Daryl Henderson. I think that that's like the coach speak way of being nice to your vets and not putting the rookie immediately in front of them because they are established. Um, But they've already said McVeigh's already said that he's anticipating a hot hand approach that will change week to week, game to game, and even during the games based on who is finding more success. Um, I don't think that Daryl Henderson is really any competition for Cam Akers, given his size, maybe on third downs. But at the real co- the real competition is Malcolm Brown. He's been in the system for several years now. And then Cam Akers, who I think is just younger and more talented. I think it's like a week one respect kind of thing. And then we're going to see the takeover probably even as early as like the second half. So. Just don't be surprised if Cam Akers sets himself apart. 
Uh, it's going to be the Jared Goff show in that matchup. I think both teams are going to be throwing a ton. Um, and I mean, Zeke is Zeke. He's going to get his. Cam Akers is who? Um, so I, <laughs> I just don't like... I am a 32. I even feel like that's being somewhat generous. I think you're going to be able to find a lot of other options. Um, I, I think Jared Goff kind of returns back to form with with Woods, Cup, and even Tyler Higby, who we're going to talk about in a little bit too. I, I just don't want anything to do with that backfield until somebody sets themselves apart. And until they do that, then they will remain um, as a barely flex play for me. Um, if that he, he's a bench player for me this week. Um, moving on to our next running back, Jordan Howard. Uh, I have him down at running back 34. So a flex play. Alex has him up at running back 21. Alex, why are you high on Jordan Howard as an RB two? When Jordan Howard's healthy and he plays, he performs at least in, as an RB two level. And he always has, that's not to say he always will, but I mean, until you prove otherwise, I try to go with your historical track record. Um, New England lost a ton of players on their defense last year. Um, that like the middle of their defense, which is kind of like a really strong suit. I know that they have they have very good cornerbacks, but they they lost several of their main defensive players. And I think that they will be susceptible to the run this year after being one of the historically great defenses. The first like. 10 to 12 weeks last year. Um, also keep in mind that Miami, for whatever reason, always does relatively well offensively against the Patriots. Um, and with Fitzpatrick being the starter there, I think you're going to see a lot of the same. Um, yeah, I just, I like Jordan Howard to get in the end zone once. And if you throw uh, throw 50 yards on there and a, and a catch or two, I think that makes him a RB2. Um. I think the only chance that he has to be an RB2 this week is because of uh, Ryan Fitzmagic starting the football game. Maybe he can keep him in the game enough to where they're still considering running the ball. The Miami Dolphins could not run the ball at all last year. Yes, they added some linemen to try and help shore up that offense. Um, but um, I just wouldn't be surprised if they fell out of the game early and it turned into a one dimensional offense, in which case it's not going to be Jordan Howard on the field. It'll be Matt Breida. So I see him as a flex play. Hopefully he falls into the end zone, gets you that touchdown, makes him, you know, exceed expectations, at least mine. And uh, yeah, that's what I got. Now, this is fun because we got to talk about two guys at the same time. It's sort of a preference thing between us. Uh, I have Lenny Fournette ranked at running back 29. You have him down at 41. I have Ronald Jones ranked down at 43. You have him ranked higher than Fournette at 34. So I guess sort of a... Sort of, a, I don't know, anticipating juxt the co juxtaposition reading through the coach speak. Ooh, yeah, I, I think I would just prefer Ronald Jones until Leonard. Like, ultimately, this comes down to snap counts, right? We don't know who's going to get what. Um, I'm banking on the fact that Ronald Jones was going to be the guy before Leonard showed up. Um, I don't I, I do think Leonard will have some carries in this game. I think Ronald Jones will be on the field substantially more than Fournette is, um, at least for this week and give uh, Fournette a couple of weeks to catch up on the playbook. Um, so I this is a hey, if Fournette's getting a goal line carry or two and falls in the end zone, then that would suck for me. Um, but I, I think Ronald Jones is the is of the the two or 17 running backs that they have on on Tampa Bay that um, if you're forced to start one of them, I would be starting Ronald Jones this week because um, I don't think he's bad. And of like of <laughs> of all of their running backs, like he's the fastest one of them. And so when they're playing on turf, I think that that field fits him better than it does for net. Um, so, I, yeah, it's more of a gut thing than anything. We don't actually know what's going to happen there. Um, I'm working on the assumption that Fournette will be on the field for like 10 to 20 percent of snaps and Ronald Jones will be on the field for about 50 to 60. Yeah, we'll see. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if the snap percentage was maybe a little bit more in the favor of, of Fournette than that 20 to 50 split that you were saying there. Um, 
with Coach Arian saying that Fournette's going to have a solid role in week one, I'm really anticipating to see what that is. And I think, honestly, if they start feeding him and he finds success, I wouldn't be surprised if he just kind of stayed in the game. Um, I think he's going to have every chance, uh, opportunity possible, not even just this week, but over the next several, as he continues to learn the playbook, to assume that role. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if he was given any, like any work inside the five or any work inside the 10. So we'll see. I, I think Tom Brady is going to be in ultimate FU mode this year. I mean, if you, if you go back to when they were putting up all those numbers, um, in 2008 or whatever year that was, and him just not giving a crap and running up the score. Um, I think he wants to stick it to Bill Belichick and show that he can do this on his own and would not be surprised to see him check into pass plays around the goal line to try to run up his own <laughs> statistical numbers. Um, so I don't, that's not to say that I don't think that the, the like, that's just why I think that I'm the, the running backs. You have no idea what's going to happen until you kind of see it play out. So the, I think they're all stayaways. If forced to take one, it's, it's Ronnie. Yep. All right, move on to wide receivers. Uh, Let's start with our last night's game. I had DeAndre. (laughs) Oh, it would have been last night's game. Excuse me. He's been traded, obviously. Duh. Uh, I have. Let's start with DeAndre Hopkins. Um, I have him ranked at wide receiver eight. You have him ranked down all the way at wide receiver 16. I'm going to guess that this has a lot to do with the matchup, given that the Niners gave up the 13th fewest points to receivers last year. Is it is anything more than that? You just want to see it before you believe it. Yeah, one one week discount. Um, first first year, new system. Don't know if him and Kyler are going to be on the same page. Um, and the 49ers defense is just so fast. And and also keep in mind this game's getting played in San Francisco, right? I believe so. And did you see the picture? Like the orange sky. It looks like they're living in Mars, and they're talking about like air quality and. Like there are legit concern and maybe this should discount most or a little bit, but there's legit concerns about like the air quality and what that's going to look like there. Um, so, yeah, this this is more of a I I tend to be very matchup based in my rankings. And if they're facing a good defense, they drop. If they're facing a bad defense, they go up. And this is a classic example of DeAndre 49ers don't like the matchup. So I have him as a as a mid wide receiver two this week. I I understand that. I guess the the 49ers cornerbacks don't really scare me though. Like Richard Sherman doesn't really intimidate me uh from a matchup perspective. I think DeAndre will be fine in getting open. It's just whether or not that D line is able to get to Kyler Murray before he can get the ball out of his hands, I think is really what it'll come down to. Um I think DeAndre still finds a way to have a good game and finish as a wide receiver one, uh, albeit on the low end. So that's why I have him there. Um, Mike Evans. Now, I need to change my ranking here. He did not practice again today, Thursday. Um, Really looking questionable for week one. Practice on the side with the trainer. Uh, I mean, did some like light work, stretching and things, working on the hamstring injury. Obviously, he missed the last three weeks of last season with the the same injury. So it's just really tough to rank. Come on, man. You've had 10 months to figure that out. It's still hurting you. Come on. (sighs) So I do have him ranked currently as wide receiver 10. I think if he plays and he's not limited, then he finishes as a wide receiver one. Alex, you have him down at 19. Is it anything more than the matchup or is it just the health? No, yeah, it's all health. And like, couldn't you see him like going on the field and and trying it out and then coming out to it's it's all just an injury discount. Um, so definitely something to be paying attention to uh, Sunday morning uh, to figure out if he's actually going to be playing or not. Um, if he and, plays, and be active. if he's active, you start him, right? Yeah, I believe. Uh, uh, I don't have this in front of me. Um, I believe that they're an app like a mid after or late afternoon game, right? So. There, there is some risk there in, um, hey, he might not be healthy for that three o'clock, three fifteen central time game. Um, so 
you know, just be aware of what your roster situation is to have a have a potential backup going uh, if he's not able to go. Yeah, they are an afternoon game on Sunday. So that is going to be difficult because you won't know. So I guess what I would say is if you're starting somebody in the flex position, that's also a receiver and you have Mike Evans, maybe you move that flex receiver to a wide receiver position, put Mike Evans in the flex. That way, in case he does sit out, you have a few more options, potentially slot in a running back instead. No doubt. Uh, moving on, Tyler Lockett, and we're gonna. This is another two-person discussion. I have Lockett ranked as wide receiver fourteen. You have him at twenty-two, and then his teammate DK Metcalf. I have him down at twenty-four. You have him at eleven. So you obviously prefer Metcalf to Lockett, and I am the opposite. Why do you think Metcalf is going to outperform? And uh, finish even as a wide receiver one this week. Uh, just a gut feeling more than anything. I, you're probably going to hear me say that a lot on on these rankings. Um, but yeah, it's uh, I think DK, they had very similar target uh, numbers last year, right? Um, yeah, Lockett. Metcalf, he, he, led, he led the league in end zone targets last year with 19. Um He's got Falcons corners, which don't scare me. Um, if anything, they're going to put the better of the better of their cornerbacks on Tyler Lockett, and so I would for like, I don't know. I just have a have a feeling about DK and him really taking over that wide receiver one um, on that team this year um, in a in a pretty good matchup against the somewhat terrible Falcons pass defense. Somewhat terrible. Um, I guess what I would say is, yes, you know, Metcalf did very well as, in terms of red zone and end zone targets, but Lockett was right up there with him. Like Russell is not afraid to target his top two guys in the red zone and in the end zone. Um, Lockett did edge out Metcalf in target share last year, uh, 21, just over 21% compared to Metcalf's 19% target share. Obviously, you know, it's going to be a different offense than it was last year. Uh, Metcalf being a rookie then now coming into a second year, hopefully takes us a step forward there. I just think that Lockett is the actual wide receiver one potentially on this offense. And so I'm going to roll with Lockett uh, to, to have a better finish than Metcalf. Um, DJ Chark. Do 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 do. I have him down at wide receiver 22. You have him all the way up at wide receiver 10. The uh, what they're playing the Colts. The Colts gave up the seventh most points to wide receivers last year. Why are you so high on DJ Chark? Who else do they have? We have no idea what the running back situation looks like. Divine Ozigbo. No. James Robinson. Don't care. Chris Thompson. Don't he'll be fine. Like, I actually think Chris Thompson will be good this week Um, because they're going to be down in every game. He's going to be great until he gets hurt. Yeah, um, it's just uh, this is the the Colts defense from a passing perspective. They have a really good run defense with the with that core linebacker that they have. Um, And I just don't want to mess around with anybody other than DJ Chark. And I think they're going to throw the ball like 45 times in this game. And if DJ Chark gets 13 of those targets, then I think he ends up a wide receiver one this week. Um, and that's, that's just, uh, that's just where I project him going because I, the matchup's good and they've got nobody else. Um, so he's, he's my guy. Like if I had to put a stake in the ground this year, him and Kenny Galladay are like my two guys that really I think are Kenny be G. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I understand the appeal of Chark from a volume and matchup perspective. I guess my only concern and why I have him ranked as only a, a mid to low end wide receiver two is really just because like you had Lenny Fournette, right? So you couldn't double wide receivers because you probably had to keep an extra guy in the box to try and stop Fournette last season. You get rid of Fournette, like their rushing game isn't intimidating at all anymore. I would like if I'm playing them and I'm a D coordinator, I'm just okay. We're doubling DJ Chark all game and we're going to make them beat us with the run without Leonard Fournette and see what they can do. So I guess that's my, you know, that's my concern 
with DJ Chark is I think that he's probably the only weapon left on the team and they're probably just going to double him. And give him 20 targets. He'll find a way to catch at least five of them. There you go. Maybe maybe he falls in the end zone. Um, Moving on to Tyler Boyd. I have him ranked down all the way at 28. Alex has him at 17. The Chargers gave up the fourth fewest points to wide receivers last year. They do have a couple of Pro Bowl corners in Chris Harris and Casey Hayward. Harris being a four-time Pro Bowler, All-Pro, and Casey Hayward being a two-time Pro Bowler, second-team All-Pro. I just think it's going to be a really good defensive team, difficult matchup. You got a rookie did QB. You, did, did you know that Mitch Trubisky was a Pro Bowler a couple years ago? I don't count that. <laughs> he as, was a write-in because, of, makes because Pro Bowl. somebody... He was a write-in because somebody got hurt. Uh, don't care about Pro Bowls. <laughs> All Pro matters, I would say. Yeah, uh, that, that one's a little bit more important. I, I want to see Joe Burrow have some fun with with Boyd and AJ Green. AJ Green and had his first full practice since 2018 today. Yeah, he declared himself 100% healthy. There you go. Um so you got to like I don't know, I just want to see come on, just give Tyler Boyd let him operate in the slot where these guys aren't going to be and maybe they'll throw T Higgins on the outside or or John Ross and just let him speed down the field to try to try to take two of these guys off of them and just let Tyler Boyd uh kind of get some cooking going in the slot and <laughs> put together a, an eight eight reception line for like 95 yards there you go that'll that, that'll be a wide receiver too <laughs> All right, moving on to Marquise Brown, Hollywood Brown. I have him ranked at 35th overall at the position. You have him all the way up at 20. So again, wide receiver two versus a flex wide receiver consideration. Cleveland last year gave up the sixth fewest points to receivers. I think you might be looking at a Denzel Ward shadow on top of it. I think, I don't know. I don't think they're going to be needing to throw it a whole lot, I guess. I'm just anticipating game flow them getting up big early and running the ball out the second half and not a whole lot coming from Marquise Brown unless he pulls off that monster play uh, they're going to be putting eight nine guys in the box right to stop the like you got to stop the run and so even if he does have Denzel Ward it's still one on one he's not getting safety top over the hell or over the top on on that like I think Marquise Brown has you know, a potential to be a very solid wide receiver too this year um, because they're going to be trying so hard to be stopping that running game. And from all yeah. accounts, Lamar Jackson's getting talked up even more by their coaching staff saying he's light years ahead of where he was last year when he led the league in touchdown passes. Uh, he's got to throw to someone. Uh, they got Mark Andrews and they got Marquise Brown. And so you think they're both going to have a good game. Yeah, I, th- I think they're both going to be really good in this game. Um, so, yeah, just uh, I, I think Marquise just ends up being a wide receiver, too, and it's, it starts this week. Moving on to tight ends. Uh, Jared Cook, I have at tight end six. You have down all the way at tight end 14. Tampa Bay gave up the eighth most points to tight ends last season. I think Cook is going to be in a track meet kind of a game. Uh, I think I wouldn't be surprised if he fell into the end zone on a big play. Like there are so many weapons to stop. That's that's the offense. only way that he ends up a tight end one this week. Okay, but if, he was a tight end machine. He was a touchdown mis- machine in the second I half know, of last season. But I'm banking on the regression happening immediately here, and that was without a healthy Kamara. Immediately, Kamara's. yeah, that was that was without a healthy Kamara. That was without a legit wider wide receiver two with Emmanuel Sanders being there. Um, I I think that there's just too many uh, mouths to feed in that offense for Jared Cook to be a to be a tight end one. And I I understand the matchup and all that. Um, it's just me being down on him in general um, because of a okay. potential touchdown regression. We'll see. All right, let's move on to Tyler Higby. I have I thought I had him up decently high at tight end seven. You have him as tight end four. You're pushing your chips into the middle. It's a good matchup with Dallas giving the the up the seventh most points to tight ends last season. You're just I think this is more indicative of how you feel about the Rams as a whole and Jared Goff. Yeah. Uh, are you just anticipating the the Rams lighting up the Cowboys? 
Uh, I think it's going to be higher scoring and it's just going to be, they don't know what they're doing at the running back situation. I think they continue to increase their passing percentage. Um, Higby again was so good at the end of last year. If that you'll know, right? Like you'll know coming out of this game is Tyler Higby a a league winner where you drafted him or is he he, is, or is he a slouch? Like you'll know right away in this game. If he produces anywhere to near anywhere near to how he finished, he is an absolute league winning caliber tight end. So, yep. yeah, I thought I was decently high on him at seven, just given the unproven nature and Gerald Everett's injury last season, evidently not high enough to touch Alex's ranking. And then our final tight end, Austin Hooper. I have him down at tight end 20. You have him up at tight end 10. Please explain. Uh, they gave him a ton of money, and I think that fits uh, Kevin Stefanski's offense in in Cleveland, where he's going to be on the field quite a bit. Uh, they're going to be running a bunch of play action passes, um, and Hooper's always kind of been that underneath guy. So if you have Odell and, and Jarvis, uh, you know, running down the field routes, um, they're running a play action pass. The running backs kind of in the backfield still. Um, that kind of opens up that underneath game for Austin Hooper. Um, and so I just would not be surprised, especially if they're down in this one and they're going to be throwing a lot for Austin Hooper to have, you know, nine, eight, nine targets in this one, um, as a big money off season acquisition, um, and really them trying to get Baker to be like, Hey, don't push the ball downfield to these guys. Like you can check down and that's where Austin Hooper is going to be going to be the guy for that offense. Yeah, I guess my concern is this is for me, this is a prove it. You can do it kind of a situation for me. Understand. Um, Baker's never really been able to support a tight end. He's had in Joku, I think, who is probably just as talented as Austin Hooper is. So I'm I'm uh, until the Cleveland Browns and Baker Mayfield specifically can prove that they actually utilize the position in a meaningful way. I'm kind of out. So. All right, let's get into let's get into streams of the week now these are guys uh, that are going to be more than 50 percent available in espn leagues who we think would make a viable streaming candidate for you in case you are desperate uh, if you're like alex and i and you missed out on quarterback we talked about it last uh, in the last podcast as well in our week one preview which if you uh if you haven't listened to yet please go listen to we preview all of this weekend's nfl matchups we talk about what we're looking for or what we're monitoring on uh from each team and uh yeah it was actually a really fun pod that was that preview pod um now let's get into these streams of the week my quarterback stream of the week is Derek Carr. Las Vegas is at Carolina. Uh, Derek Carr is only rostered in 13% of leagues. I really just think that the given the state of the Carolina defense, that that Las Vegas is really going to come in here and and you know light them up. Um, I think that Derek Carr makes a fine streaming candidate if you happen to miss. And I, actually, on the converse of that i think teddy bridgewater makes a decent stream as well so either one of these guys i think are fine streamers yep uh my my quarterback stream i i have a good stream in case my prostate's very good in case any listener was was uh, wondering about that um my my stream of the week is uh is is mitchy trubisky my guy and this isn't even a homer pick it's more of a like he only plays good against the Detroit Lions, I guess. So his last three starts against the Lions, um, he's completed almost 75% of his passes, uh, 866 yards in those three games, nine touchdowns, one interception, um, all That's three games. Yeah, all three games, the Bears won. Uh, by the way, they're underdogs this weekend, plus three in Detroit. Um we don't know if Montgomery's playing or what their running back situation looks like. Um, so I, Matt Nagy tends to air the ball out a little bit more anyway. Um, and Trubisky's usually best when he's on the move. So you you actually might get some bonus rushing yards. He had a whole bunch of them two years ago and not so many last year. Um, so Mitchie, 2.4% of leagues um, rostered. Rostered. 
not even started disrespect for my guy mitch um so he's he's my stream of the week against a uh somewhat weak detroit pass uh offense that uh quarterbacks averaged 20 points against uh, pass last defense year. you mean yeah oh yeah yeah sorry yeah you know and, and they about. no longer have darius slay either trading him to philly so i uh, i wouldn't be surprised if mitch has a good game week one um and you mentioned Montgomery playing, not playing. I think he does. He was limited today. Um, Tariq Cohen, when asked about Montgomery's injury, said uh, now and his injury recovery status says that Montgomery looks like the injury never happened. So I I don't know. Montgomery said he was afraid he tore it when it happened. <laughs> so <laughs> he's like, got a strong groin, apparently. Woo! Oh man, if he's a, but if he's available, that's a boon for that offense. Um, considering like the next true running back is who like Ryan Nall. Oof. So who or yeah, Cordero. Um, all right. Great, great quarterback stream there. Um, let's move on to kickers. I'm going to stay in the same game here. I'm going Cairo Santos. Um, I think that Chicago is really going to have a really good game against Detroit. Um, I know that these probably seem like Homer picks, but really it's like, Detroit isn't going to have a good defense. Mitch Trubisky is historically averaging 20 plus points a game. Like they're going to be able to move the ball against Detroit. I'm, I just think that they might end up in field goal range and have a couple drive stall and get some, some nice field goal point opportunities there. So, yeah, I do not have a stream of the week for, for kickers, but I will add that what I try to do is I try to find teams that have or that are going up against good defenses. So Detroit Lions being a prime example, or even the Giants this week um, where, hey, you're going up against a good defense. You, you're able to move the ball that the defense bends, but doesn't break. Um, so Giants kickers, Lions kickers, um like I, I, unless you're getting like Tucker or Butker or, you know, some of those guys on these high powered offenses, I like to try to find, hey, which offense is going against a good defense and hope that they the drive stall for for the field goals. So that's just more of a general general thought concept than actually naming any players. True. That's yeah, not bad. Uh, and then streamable defenses for the week. Again, more than 50% available or available in more than 50% of ESPN leagues. My defensive stream of the week is going to be the Philadelphia Eagles that they are currently only rostered in 47% of leagues. I think that number ticks above 50 by the time the Sunday matchup actually comes because that matchup against yeah, Washington it'll be, it'll is just so tasty. Yeah. yeah like whoever, whoever's the, the one. Yeah, whoever the Washington football team plays every week, like that's going to be the stream of the week in most cases. Them or the Jets. Stream of the week. Yeah, stream and I got uh, I got the Jets. Um, so the Jets had the number one rush defense in the NFL last year uh, up until the last three weeks of the season where they got a little loose. Um, the, and the, the Bills run the ball. Um, I don't know if we trust their pass offense. So you have strength versus strength there. And what's probably going to be a pretty low scoring interdivisional game. Um, I would not be surprised if the Jets end up beating the Bills. Um, I, I know the Jets defense lost Jamal Adams to the Seahawks um, during the offseason, but it's, it's more of a strength versus strength thing. And I trust their defense to hold the Bills rushing attack at bay a little bit. Um, and I mean, don't be surprised if Josh Allen throws a pick six in this one. Yeah, yeah, true. Um, interesting pick there. I was not expecting the Jets there. So I'm not starting them. I'm just saying that if you're in a rough spot, like don't be surprised if they're like a middle of the pack defensive team this week. And then lastly, upset alert. Um, I I personally have picked a team. I don't know if Alex has picked one as well, but uh, based on matchups and where the lines are currently. Um, the Seahawks are favored at minus one and a half over the Falcons. I actually think that, uh, the Falcons have a great chance to win that game against the Seahawks. They're fully healthy. They have every, all their weapons back available. They actually have a running back in Todd Gurley. I wouldn't be surprised if the Falcons at least cover the spread, if not actually come out and win the game. So yeah, I don't mind the Falcons. The problem is, is that whenever you bet on the Falcons, you always bet the wrong side because the Falcons are the Falcons and it doesn't matter. <laughs> you just always bet the wrong side. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, I, I actually kind of like the Bears plus three this week. Um, That's, yeah, easily. That was my second, but I didn't yeah. want to be too much of a homer. <laughs> right. Yeah. Bear, Bears plus three. Um, and then I'm, I'm, I think Carolina's favored um, over the Raiders, but I, I really do think Carolina comes out and and puts on an offensive show um, with with Teddy kind of dispensing the ball to his his four weapons um, in that offense. So um, they're just another one where um, I would be comfortable betting on them this weekend. Other than my last night victory, where Kansas City uh, covered the three and a half and the over 40, 47 happened with my teaser. So tease me, please me. It sounds like it sounds like a segment. Yeah, we, we have go. a drop for that, don't we? <laughs> Please me. Oh, man. All right. Everybody with that, thank you for listening. As we head to our social media page, please like, follow, subscribe, hit the bell. If you're watching on YouTube, listen or like, leave us a review on whatever platform you're listening on. Um, all of it helps, helps us get the word out and uh, be discovered by more people. Thank you guys for watching, listening, and have a good rest of your day and uh, good luck week one. Football. Yeah. Oh, by the way, if you haven't and you're listening to this, you should go and listen to the NFL primetime soundtrack. And it's just like 46 minutes of all the football music that you grew up listening to. It'll really fire your ass up. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Football Sackos podcast. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at the FF Sackos.